Howdy folks, Tex Grabner here with Tex Grabner Outdoors. I hope you guys are ready for your Tex Grabner Outdoors Saturday morning cartoon awesomeness because it's the Illinois Archery Season 2019, week number five. If you guys want to support the channel in a way beyond simply watching the videos, you can go to TexGrabnerOutdoors.com, check out the Make It Weird sticker, the Make It Weird shirt, the Life Ain't Like the Pornos, Hunting Ain't Like the TV Show shirt, and of course my personal favorite, the Kill With Stick shirt. Arr! Now, if you guys want a discount on all your Trad Life supplies, you can go to 3riversarchery.com, check out their merchandise, and show your support for Tex Grabner Outdoors, and get a shipping discount by using the code of Tex Grabner in your checkout. Now, you don't have to be in good shape to be a good hunter, but as a hunter, you will never regret being in good shape. So, I strongly recommend that you check out traintohunt.com. Become involved in the Train to Hunt Challenge series that goes on over the summer. Check out their programming for fitness. And I would really love to see more traditional bow hunters, more hunters in general, at the Train to Hunt National Championships. Now, I bring you the sunshiny reality of the Illinois archery season. I can't do anything else because I don't have the resources to actually lie. I can't fake it. Wiley Coyote is my spirit animal, and life ain't like the pornos, hunting ain't like the TV shows. But I hope you guys are going to enjoy this week's episode of Tex Grabner Outdoors, because it's your Tex Grabner Outdoors Saturday morning cartoon awesomeness. We picked beans till after dark, and it was about 10 in the morning by the time that I drugged my ass out of bed, and it was raining. Of course, we picked late to make sure we got the field done before the rain came in. Hunting whitetail in the rain is very different than hunting like backcountry in the rain. Because when it's 40 degrees and raining is about the most miserable conditions that you can think of. Because it's a wet cold. Of course, when I say hunting whitetail versus backcountry hunting and getting wet, I mean that it's not like you can't go home and dry out. It's very different than if you're in some wilderness area away from modern conveniences where you're gonna get wet, you're gonna stay wet, and you're not gonna be able to get warm again. So I'm not out here because I wanna be out here. I'm out here because normally, if you can outlast the rain, as soon as the rain stops, the deer are going to pop up like daisies and be all over the place because the rain has kept them bedded down where they're sheltered. Of course, in this case, it started to get dark. Rain never stopped. Now, I'm not out here because I want to be out here. I'm out here because if I wasn't out here, I'd be wondering what would be going on if I was somewhere else. I am so glad that I've got this rope where I can basically fast rope down this muddy ass hill. No idea if I'm gonna be able to get across the creek. The two days could not have been more different. 40 degrees and drizzling rain, absolutely miserable, and finding out that my fancy first light gear leaks like a sieve because the seams have loosened up in the stitching, and two years worth of barbed wire fence crossing and pushing through multiflora rose bushes, versus today, sunny, 60, absolutely beautiful, playing the high stakes game of whack-a-mole, trying to figure out whether I should go down to the public land and sit the acorn flat that I sat last night, or whether or not I should actually go to the pasture. Well, I got down the hill and figured out that the beaver dam did control flooding. However, it also sped up the water flow to where I was not getting in there because I would have been swept off my feet, highly likely. So in the interest of a can-do spirit and making the best of my decision and to go hunting is always better, no matter what, than to actually just say hell with it, I'm going home. 
I pulled off my camera mounts from the tree stand that I hadn't hunted this year so far. And so I set up underneath the cedar tree and hoped had to level off the grain bin this morning, clean out the mower deck for the next time that it gets dry enough to mow. But the animals have to be fed at a specific time of day, and so I knew I wasn't getting out to the public land to not see shit after I got done with chores. Creek was definitely going to be too swift to get across, so I brought my hawk ground seat, or tree seat, and I set up originally where the deer cross the fence, which seems a little bit like a cheap trick of like how out west the Montana bison tag, you basically have to set up on the border of Yellowstone Park and wait for them to cross. However, in this case, I decided that that was a little bit too exposed, but I did find a tree that was grown up through the fence, a little Osage tree that was basically a lover's tree twisted around the fence wires. And so I figured to hell with it, I know that I'm not going to see anything. I might as well get something accomplished because this is about a perfect ambush for a plan that's just dumb enough to work. What I try and drive home to people is mental toughness, the ability to make the best of what you can with what you've got. So is this ideal? Nope. But I also live in a dirty world and I bring you reality. So I'm set up about... 10 yards down the fence row from where the deer will cross the fence and it actually is a really good spot because I'm going to be screened by the honeysuckle until the deer walks into the shooting lane. Hopefully there'll be enough leaves on the ground by the time that they start moving to where I'd actually be able to hear them coming and be ready. Well I've been slinging some arrows in the garage tonight practicing from shooting sitting level on the ground and I can't say that I've seen any buck sign on the property or on the public land property for that matter, but it's still early. Now I've seen what might be rubs, but I can't positively identify them as deer rubs on the honeysuckle because I can't tell whether or not it's buck rub or whether it's rubbing from the cattle trying to scratch off the flies during fly season. So I'm not real sure. Well, it's 33 degrees and raining. The ground's too soft to get my Jeep in here, so I'm hiking in, or walking in rather. Probably got an hour of daylight. It's gonna suck. I'll worry about how in the hell I'm going to get a deer up the hill if I kill one. It's going to be all kinds of fun. Well, surprise, surprise. Can't get to that tree stand. Beaver Dam is washed out. Looks like I'm sitting on the ground again. You would be hard pressed to find somebody that is willing to do what I do with the chances of success that I actually realistically have on this parcel of property. The industry is colder than a pimp's heart. Life ain't fair and life ain't fun. And quite frankly, it's not supposed to be. You're supposed to suffer and build character. That way your success actually matters. With that being said, 
you fix one problem and you end up with another. You see, I got a hold of a used but new to me Canon G20, which is a great camera. The only problem is I can't actually use a wired remote to actually start it up. So it's got to be the fluid camera angle. The good news is I can use a camera with a viewfinder now as my hard camera angle. What's also nice about hunting on the ground is that you can really get a wide angle on the hard camera angle. So I just hooked this up on a fence post. And in spite of the chances of an animal coming into the cattle pasture being incredibly low, I do think that it is an excellent spot to set up because I'm screened by brush and literally as soon as the animal breaks the property line, it's walking into a shooting lane of mine and then I have another shooting lane where it would walk and it should be under a 20 yard shot. Now, creek was flooded so that's not great. But I fixed one problem by getting a new camera to me, but I ended up with another. You see, one of my zippers on the legs of my first light bibs coming down the hill, it ripped. Or however you want to say it. The zipper failed. Now it's 33, 34 degrees, it's raining. All I've got under it's long johns because it's not wicked cold. Now I know I'm not going to die, but I also know that I'm not going to be comfortable. Good news is there's about 40 minutes till dark at this point. I know I'm not going to die. But sometimes you just have to get starving coon dog mean and say, yeah, I'm here, this sucks, but I'm already here, I might as well stick it out. Now, can I send them back to first light and have them fix them? Maybe, I have no idea. They're probably out of warranty, and I've learned at this point that probably not worth it to try and send them back because what the hell am I gonna wear in the meantime? So what I'm likely to do is draw upon one of the most important skills that I ever learned, which is how to sew. Probably going to go to Joanne's Fabric, get some actual metal zippers, and just stitch them in there myself with a little bit of fishing line, but we'll see. Oh, and spoiler alert, didn't see shit today. We haven't even had a frost yet. We've got four inches of snow. Half the crops are out of the field. Ah, boy. Ground's not quite froze yet. Got livestock to take care of, all kinds of fun. I'm building temporary electric fence to put cattle out on the pasture. Everybody wants to be a cowboy till it's time to do cowboy shit. It's not unheard of that we would have a snow on Halloween. I remember a couple of times it ruining Halloween as a kid, but it's also not that common. Now, I'm willing to go out in conditions that other people won't, and I take a great pride in that. I also take a great pride in the fact that I'm literally one of you and I live in reality. Now, the reality is, I normally cannot afford to replace my tires until I blow one and then I have to find the money somewhere to get it replaced. So I got pretty bold tires. Well, driving out to the hunt, I ended up hitting some slush and slick tires do not like slush, so it pulled me down into the ditch. Well, I coasted down into the ditch, got spun around the wrong way, and... I was in four-wheel drive, but I didn't have the traction to pull myself out of the ditch. So I just straddled the center line of the ditch, 
and drove down the ditch until I ended up getting to the culvert crossing to enter the field and got turned around pretty as you please. So I managed to ditch my Jeep without wrecking my Jeep. Meanwhile, I love hunting on the snow. I started out this hunt with the intentions of going to the public land. Now I have to take the same road to get to the public land that I do to get to the cattle pasture. Now seeing as I put the Jeep in the ditch before I got to the cattle pasture and the road that I have to take beyond the cattle pasture to get to the public land is a snaky winding death trap, I figured, well, might as well just pull over and go to the cattle pasture instead of going down to the public land. You might also be wondering why I'm wearing my plaid shirt when it's so damn cold. And it was kind of a strategic sacrifice because I watered up my heavy first light jacket so that I didn't freeze my ass to my hawk seat because my nice hawk seat pad is down on my stand in the public land, if it is even still there. Now, while I love hunting on snow, there is also the consideration that you can move like a ghost on the snow, but the animals can too. But it also makes deer pop out really beautifully against the snow. Of course, they can be on you, and you never even know until it's too late. I love hunting on the snow because it is savagely majestic. I don't know how else to explain it. There's just something terribly beautiful about Midwestern snowy timber. Oddly enough, I wasn't here when a deer walked through. But as I was sitting and watching and waiting and listening and hoping and praying and plotting and scheming, I was filled with a wondering what in the hell had possessed this deer to actually take this trail. Absolutely no idea. Hunting is a visceral mystery. I'm just glad that even though I had to fast rope repel down the hill, that I had the rope for getting out. Joanne's fabric, you might guess that I stick out when I walk in this store. But, gonna get a zipper, well, two zippers, see if I can get my first light bits fixed up. Needles, zippers, and by the way, Joanne's fabric, I just found out, sells wool. 100% wool basically 25 bucks a yard. One problem, it's white. But, they do sell wool felt. So that's good. I may be getting into the textile industry. Well, the chores are done. Not enough daylight left to get out. Gonna practice here in the backyard. Would have liked to have got down to the public land tonight. Now, I also wish that I had enough money to get a 3D target. But no, I live in real life, so we're using a bag. Well, I'm shooting a little bit low, which may be a good thing, seeing as a white tail will make a liar out of your aim. I'm gonna go for another round, I guess. Guess I'm gonna try this one standing up.
well, not terrible, but also not great. The trouble is you do not rise to your level of training, you fall to your level of mastery, and honestly, there's also just the throw of the dice as far as what the animal is going to do when you shoot the arrow. Well, no kill with sticks. Wiley Coyote is still my spirit animal, and life ain't like the pornos, hunting ain't like the TV shows. But you got to make sure that you tune in next week for Tex Grebner Outdoors, Illinois Archery, Season Week Number 6, and see if I kill with sticks. I've still got plenty of season left, and the truth is, as I always say, I hunt for sport, and the Wiley Whitetail runs me a merry chase. And it's always a brand new adventure when you get out into the woods, because truthfully, you never really know what's going to happen on a hunt. As always, God bless all my sports in America. Join the NRA to protect our rights. Please got my friends over at ThreeRiversArcher.com. Thank you very much to those who've been involved in law enforcement and those who served in the military. And thanks for watching Tex Grebner Outdoors. I've really got to learn not to do these at 1 in the morning.